and kite zealots pretty much mm -hmm. infinitely as soon as they have the speed upgrade. This would be a very, very strong position for our Zerg player to be in, but we do see a large group of burrowed infestors moving out, and it looks like their goal is the natural third that uh, most people end up taking on this map, but that is not what our Protoss player has gone for at all. Yeah, there's nothing there at all. And in fact, if he chooses to go for the second base or the natural expansion, he's not going to make it in there because of those cannons providing vision of burrowed units. Though those units moving out might be an all like, really bad anti-timing, though. No, he does he does have them stop while they're still going to have at least a little bit of time in sight range of the cannon. And an observer does pop out right in time so that these infestors will not be able to get into the natural and main and cause some trouble. And I just want to draw a little bit of attention to these three photon cannons that are currently guarding the uh, third base of the Protoss player. I have been finding that in these lower resource games, every piece of static defense is a lot more valuable. So oh, yes. A great decision Definitely. to put these cannons out there and he's even building a really good wall this is going to be totally zergling proof we'll be able to move out and not worry about any counter attacks whatsoever yeah and just look he's basically eliminated any kind of attack path except for this one incredibly narrow one does oh, it look like no. these investors are coming in <laughs> oh man losing <gasps> will he lose all of them no he does get one fungal off and manages to get one away if he burrows yeah so <laughs> One infestor living through that, that was just a big blunder by a Zerg player. Yeah, he needed to poke in with just one guy or be keeping a very close eye out for... Am I certain that my opponent does not have any detection over this army? Because if he does, losing 450 gas for literally nothing is not a good place to be. Particularly when, oh no, he's only just now taking the gas in his uh, third base and that's really showing in his resource distribution. He has a lot of uh, minerals, but just very, very little gas. Yeah, and it does look like our Zerg player is... Oh, got a fungal off on that observer there. That was fantastic. Don't know if you saw that where those infestors were. Oh, yeah, he does kill it. <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah, getting rid of that vision that. over his army. He does not want it to be constantly keeping tabs on any counterattacks or other aggressive moves he might be doing. And we actually see the fourth base going up for our Protoss player right now. This is a very macro-oriented game, and oh, I yeah. really like he's beginning to build a wall already. This is a very turtle style that uh, Puggett has been playing and is letting him build up a very large and quite frightening army. And it does look like Puggett is moving alongside the side of the map with his stalkers, and I don't know if he mean, meant to do that or not. He kind of just passed up an investor. But it uh, looks like the Zerg is, oh my god, going to come in here with these Zerglings. Will they surround the stalkers? No. Oh, yes, he's, oh, never mind. <laughs> he was going to go in there, but they do have Blink. He has to watch out, though. Get away. He can Blink directly into the main from that position, yep. and then just Blink back at any point if go. he decides he doesn't like what's going on, and the attack does move directly in. He immediately picks off the defenses that were being built, trying to get the upgrades, but a huge number of uh, Zerglings run back, and one guy is not able to Blink back. Back. It is the last stalker. It's like no and stalker. Get back and because of a little bit of uh, indecisiveness, the Zerg player is able to escape. Now there's just a couple of stalkers continuing this aggression. Yeah, this is a really great harassment from Puggett right now. He's actually only lost one, and finally two stalkers in this entire aggression. Gonna lose some more. Probably should go ahead and retreat now. These investors are out and getting some great shots up on him though. Yeah, he's not exercising the best uh, infestor control. He can run in and drop a fungal, but oh no, the aggressive blink takes out two more infestors and losing all of these, and he lost the last one with high energy, so he really doesn't have anything going for him with this huge investment that he had in the infestor tech. Yeah, we're seeing some really strong micro from Puggett managing to take off a lot of units that normally he wouldn't be able to do if this map or if this battle was happening on an open map area. Yeah, we do see in the uh, units tab, I do think that the uh, production and macro of the Zerg player is slipping a little bit. He has 14 unused larvae and a bank of 4,000 minerals and 1,200 gas. He could definitely be yeah. using that. But the uh, harassment is continuing in. He picks off another infestor. Very nice transfuse, but I don't think it's going to end up... No, he gets an excellent burrow. So he is able to save that last infestor, but it's going to be at the cost of one queen and probably two. He's not moving these Zerglings back to try to deal with this, and the attack is continuing. There's no reason for him to stop. Up. One of the things we haven't been looking too much at is the very large and scary army that's continuing to build up for our yeah. Protoss player. He's almost maxed out. He has Colossus on the field with 2-2 two, two upgrades. Oh man. 
it does look like Yaki is trying to manage to get to where those stalkers are. Gonna be going ahead and trying to take out these destructible rocks, but this is just such a good position for Puggy to do harassment in. What now? Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go right in. I was gonna say that we do have another attack coming from Puggy going towards either the third or the fourth. It does look like the fourth base of our Zerg player, and that is so far away from where the army of Zerg is that it's gonna be so hard for him to defend. Now Puggett back in the main base of Berserk player manages to lose all of his stalkers and Yaki doing a successful job of defending. Now Puggett is more not morphing but blinking in here to the fourth base of Zerg and might be able to take it out. I do love him leaving just a couple of stalkers on that high ground so that he maintains the vision. Yeah. And as the attacking units, all of these Zerglings end up coming in to try to deal with that attack. He can blink back the stalkers one at a time, keeping them alive and firing for as quick or as long as possible, and the hatchery does fall. Yeah, it doesn't look like Yaki's just a little bit too scared to engage and I, I don't blame him. He honestly doesn't have that many units to um well, to take out these stalkers. Yeah, with this very heavy Zergling compo er, composition, he has 65 Zerglings, just 12 Roaches, and a couple Banelings, one Infester. He's going to have a hell of a time dealing with those three Colossus that are on the field. With the 2-2 two -two upgrade, 19 damage per swipe of their lasers. You're going to cut through uh, those remaining Zerglings very, very quickly. Now we do see quite a few uh, Zerglings being morphed into Banelings here, so Yaki either building those for defense or might be trying to do a little bit of a last ditch attack here. Um, not sure what exactly he does have in mind, but Puggett moving in here and gonna do, get some shots off on some Zerglings. Blinking back though, no reason to overextend and lose more units than he needs to lose. I really do not like Banelings as anything other than Baneling drops. I think that yeah. they just, they can be too easily sectioned off. Uh, and as we see right here, they are going to get some huge hits. Wow. wow! That was actually an incredibly cost-efficient trade that none of the sentries were able to get down any force field to try to mitigate that damage. And that might have put Yaki just right back in the game. He's almost equalized yeah. the supply. That was insane. Just so many zealots were lost right there. It does look like Yaki is getting attacked by from two different sides by our Protoss player. And I think that we might actually have an epic fight going on right now, but Puggett using great advantage of the um, high ground and low ground here with this Colossi getting them up on the high ground and Zealots, or I'm sorry, Zerglings coming in here managed to take out one Immortal, but uh... One Immortal and two Sentries, so there is now just one Sentry with no energy left on the field. This is excellent harass, taking advantage of the extended Thermal Lance range to try to hop into the base, abuse that high ground, low ground position, and yeah, Yaki's had enough. I think that the harassment's just been too much for him all throughout this game. Absolutely. Alright guys, I hope you all enjoyed that cast. This is uh, Pool, and I do appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you want to check out my channel, it's youtube.com slash poolsc. And where can they find you, Senex? www.youtube.com slash wiseoldsenex. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Oh, we have.